name is Dr. Jack Burton. Today I'm going to discuss stem cells. I'm an adjunct clinical professor at the University of Minnesota School of Medicine. I began the Carter's Restoration Center of Minnesota approximately two to three years ago, where we do injectable treatments for patients with osteoarthritis of the knee. I'm also a member of Minnesota Bone and Joint Specialists, and I've been in orthopedic surgical practice in Minnesota for the past 35 years. These are my disclosures. I work with numerous companies developing products. I'm also a member of the editorial board for Orthopedics Today. I'm a member of the NFL Retired Players Association, where I serve on their board taking care of aging athletes. I'm the executive advisor for the Arthroscopy Association Board of Directors. I'm the past president of the Arthroscopy Association North America, which has over 4,000 members. I'm also on the board of directors for the Orthopedic Learning Center for the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, where we plan all the courses which are taken by orthopedic surgeons, literally on a weekly basis. I'd like to discuss very briefly what, our, what stem cells are. These are ubiquitous cells. They're found in the peripheral blood. They're found in fat. They're found in bone marrow. In addition to stem cells, the peripheral blood has uh, mesenchymal type stem cells that can be acquired by virtually just removing blood from the body. The problem is, when you take it from blood, they come in very, very low numbers, about one in two million. There's been some animal studies using these mesenchymal stem cells with high molecular weight hyaluronic acid to regrow cartilage. And the cartilage turns out to be predominantly hyaline cartilage, which is the normal cartilage that we have when we're born, compared to a, a control group that does not get the mesenchymal stem cells and high molecular weight viscose supplementation. This has just been reported in a journal as of August of 2015. Is it worth harvesting mesenchymal stem cells from peripheral blood? Well, again, the problem is it's very, very low volume of stem cells that you get. This was recently published in the American Journal of Sports Medicine. And if you look at this type of study coming out of rabbits, the truth of the matter is you get very, very low numbers of stem cells compared to harvesting it from other areas in the body. And what about if you implant these uh, cells surgically? If we look at Alberto Gobi from Rome's uh, work that he's published in the American Journal of Sports Medicine, you get pretty good fill when you implant them surgically, but you get a mix of hyaline cartilage and fibrocartilage when you do biopsies, which means you don't get real normal cartilage like you would if you transplanted cartilage from one part of the body, body to another. So what's the purpose of doing this? Well, first of all, if we use the appropriate site where we obtain and harvest the stem cells, you get very, very high concentrations of stem cells. And the best place to do this, quite honestly, is from the iliac crest, which is part of the pelvic area of the body. So we take these cells, we spin them down, and then we can re-inject them into the knee to get concentrations as high as 80%. If you look at some of the literature, when you do the concentrated bone marrow aspirate, and then you add something called microfracture, which is penetration of small holes in the bone, you see you get pretty doggone good results in terms of getting new cartilage that's formed. This is a little bit hard to see, but clearly it's superior, superior healing versus just really bones alone. And so what happens is, furthermore, if you use fat pad to do this, in other words, obtain the cells. Uh, Jason Dragu at Stanford has shown this. You do get a moderate concentration of cells, but not nearly as good as when you aspirate it from the bone. So there's no question that if you look at the literature, stem cells improve symptoms from knee osteoarthritis. Uh, this is adipose tissue, uh, uh, stem cells, PRP. You get significant improvement in what are called Womack, Lysholm, and VAS scores. These are subjective scoring systems that we use in knee research to prove that patients are doing better. So stem cells have been isolated from bone marrow, fat, actually the joint lining or synovium, and from blood. The trouble is with stem cells, they tend to de-differentiate. Uh, adipose tissues have pretty good stability and pluripotential and actually increase chondrogenicity but clearly bone marrow works the best. It should be noted though, there's a lot of stem cell ongoing research because the problem is these cells tend to de-differentiate into fibrocartilage. However, we have seen some studies now that are showing 
comparatively that they do better than any other type of injectable treatment, including visco supplementation and PRP. So it's clear that there are multiple injection treatments for patients that have knee arthritis. What we're trying to do, especially between the ages of 30 and 65, is to postpone putting metal and plastic in knees. In other words, postpone putting total knee replacement in as long as possible. And it's clear when you compare the literature now, it, it seems that stem cells give you the greatest chance of postponing knee replacement as long as possible. Thank you very much.